Hello and welcome everyone. This is Patty Bennett. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Today I will be showing you some projects and a product review of the Stampin' Up! By the Bay Suite. This is part of my weekly live series of videos. I usually go live every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. So if you are joining in live, please do say hello. I would love to say hello to you. If you're new, let me know that. If you're watching a replay on YouTube or on my blog, please skip ahead maybe just a minute or two while we get all the technology set up and we say hello to everybody who's joining in live. So hi, I see Donna and who else just says 14 other people, but I can't see who you are. So if you're joining in live, please say hi. Hi, Nicolette from New Zealand. That is exciting. Hello, Diana. Hi, Janet. Hey, from Pleasant Hill. You're just a couple miles away from me. That's awesome. Greetings, Kelly. Welcome, everyone. So if you're just joining in, this is Patty Bennett, and we are going to be looking at these By the Bay cards today and some tips, and we'll be making this one together. Isn't it pretty? Look at that beautiful shimmer. I'm going to show you how I did that, and I'm going to give you some tips in general for this beautiful suite. It is called By the Bay, and it is in the Stampin' Up! January to April catalog for 2023. Hi, Anne. Hello, Beth, Pamela, Lori, Louise, Debbie, Kelly, Janet, Diana. Hello, everybody. Hi, Tammy. Welcome. Hello, Patty. That's always fun to welcome someone with your own name, right? <laughs> All right. So I think we are just about at the top of the hour. So we are going to get started. Hello, Christine in Sydney, Australia. That's super exciting. That's awesome. I'm so glad that you are all here. So today we are talking about this suite from Stampin' Up! It is called By the Bay. These are some samples that Stampin' Up! made in the catalog. And then the products are on the following page, page 23. So we're going to look at this bundle. I'm going to give you some tips and hints about using the bundle. This ribbon is beautiful. This is also in the suite. We're going to use these beautiful pearls. And then I'm going to show you the paper and just some really neat things that you can do with the paper and the dies because they coordinate, which is like super exciting, right? So we are going to look at all these beautiful products and make this project together. Hi Nell, hi Linda, Louise, Christine. Hello, welcome everyone. If you're looking for these projects and you would like to maybe pin them to Pinterest or print them out or save them to your computer or whatever. Pattystamps.com is where I blog each day. You're going to find some of these cards on my blog tomorrow, which would be February 18th. You'll find the remainder of them on my blog on Sunday, February 19th. So as soon as those posts go live, I will have them linked in the description of this video if you're watching on YouTube, and that way you can find those posts. You can also find all the products that we're using today, both on my blog and um, in the description of the video on YouTube. Which reminds me, I noticed this morning, actually I noticed a couple days ago, but I double checked this morning. This bundle that we are using today is on low inventory status as of today, February 17th. So if after you see this, you're thinking, yeah, you know, I really think I might like this or I want to get this, don't delay. The dies are what is on low inventory. So that's the number for the dies. If you want the entire bundle, that's the number for the bundle. And again, if you don't have a demonstrator, you can hop over to pattystamps.com to click the shopping buttons, or you can go to pattystamps.com forward slash shop to get to my Stampin' Up! store. So I just wanted to have you make note of that. If you're watching live and it happens that you're thinking about getting this, don't delay because it's popular. I know so many people love this and I don't blame them because it's beautiful. 
Alrighty, so let me show you something. I've kind of shown this a couple of times for different bundles, but this is something that I like to do when I first get my stamp set and my coordinating dies. And this just really helps me to kind of wrap my head around which stamps have a coordinating die, which dies are kind of independent and don't go with a stamp, and then, of course, there's also stamps that don't have a die. So there's kind of three different things to discover when you get a new bundle. So this really helps me. So I stamped out the images and anything that had a die cut matching, I went ahead and die cut them. And I left this piece of washi tape on here because I wanted to remind you about something. So I... I want to show you what I do with washi tape when I get a red rubber stamp, a set. So I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of times these newer sets from Stampin' Up are so sticky. They're so clingy that they actually stick almost too well in your box, and they also almost stick too well on a clear block. So here's what I do. I take a little little tiny bit of washi tape and I stick it just on one little part of my stamp just a little corner or an edge or something and I use my Teflon scissors to just trim that excess off so what remains is just just a teeny little bit but what that does is that when you have this in your case or you have it on a clear block it gives you that little kind of a, a thumb area, that's what I call it, stick your thumb and you can pull that right up. So I just wanted to show you that again. I know I've shared that before, but since a lot of the Stampin' Up! stamps are clear photopolymer and not a lot of them are the red rubber, then I, I don't have that opportunity to share that idea with you. So anyway, just wanted to remind you of that tip. Oh, good. Thank you. I Yay! I'm glad that you are liking that tip. Yeah, I have found that in the last few years when Stampin' Up! switched to the different, uh, I don't know if you call it a formula or a whatever you call the new stickers, they are so sticky that especially if you are stamping for a long period of time or let's say you are teaching a class and your stamps are on a clear block for an extended period, like, you know, hours at a time, they're nearly impossible to get back off. So that tip is super duper helpful. So I wanted to show you that and then just show you this. This is a half sheet of cardstock. If you want to make these for yourself, I would suggest starting with a half sheet. You could always make them larger or smaller if you need to. But for me, this pretty much works. And then I keep these with my catalog. Everybody always asks, what do you do with them? How do you file them? How do you store them? I just put them in my catalog. I keep a catalog over here to my right at my stamping desk. I have another catalog downstairs at my computer. I have one in the car. I have one by my side of the bed, like they're all over, but I keep it here at my desk. And that way I can kind of look through here and remember what greetings are in the set, which stamps have a coordinating die and all those good things. So look at this one in particular. Isn't this pretty? This shell actually is hinged and look at the detail. Can you see the beautiful detail in that? And then I also want you to remember the detail that you see on these four shells because we're going to look at another tip in a few minutes. Aren't they pretty? I just think they're fascinating and fabulous. I'm also going to give you a tip for this die as well. So let's get going on the stamping and the creating and then we'll go through the tips as we are um, creating together. Let's see. I keep mine in the surrounding... Oh, yes, that's another thing, Holly. You can keep that piece of, yeah, she calls it surrounding rubber. I don't really even know if it has a name. But you know how the, the stamps come in a big rectangle with the openings. You could do that. You could keep all of your stamps in those openings, and you just don't push them all the way down. But that still doesn't solve the issue of what happens when you put it on a clear block. So this way, with that little bit of washi tape, it kind of solves both problems. Oh, good. I'm so glad you like the cards. Thank you, everybody. All righty. 
So I want to show you this beautiful technique. I actually have used it on both of these cards. Do you see this shimmer? So what I did was I grabbed, I hadn't used this yet, a little, little embarrassing, but it's a three pack of pearlized enamel effects. These were originally in the holiday catalog last year, the one that came out in the fall and ran through Christmas time. And I had not even opened this. And now I'm embarrassed that I didn't open it because the red one would have been amazing for Christmas. But anyway, now that I know and now that I'm using it, it's so fun. And it is still available. It's not actually shown in any catalog, but it is available in the online store. And I have it linked in the products on my blog post and in my um, below my YouTube video, if you're watching on YouTube. And yeah, YouTube. So anyway, I want to show you what I did with it. You're going to want to have a piece of plastic. And what this plastic is from is, you know, when you have or when you receive your photopolymer sets, they are on a sheet of plastic. And then there's also a little sheet of plastic. Hang on. I just, wait, I just knocked off. a. St oh, here it is. I just moved that like, teeny little heart and I don't want to lose it. Um, anyway, it comes on a sheet of plastic and then there's also a little sheet of plastic on top. Well, I save those and I just have a little stack of them. So that's what I'm going to use. But you could also use your silicone sheet. You could use a cello bag. You could use anything that's not porous. You're also going to want a blending brush. And for this, I'm just using the new small size brush didn't need a larger one, so I just decided that's fine. I'm just going to use the small one. And then I took a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock, and this is, is the Shells, Seashells 3D embossing folder. So all I did was just put the plain Knight of Navy cardstock inside. I put it through my die cutting machine, and it comes out like this. Can you see all those beautiful? Yeah, you can see that. The raised, beautiful 3D looking shells. Now, this is not a part of this suite. This is in the annual catalog, and we've had this a couple of years, but I love, love, love this folder. I love just, oh, that just fell in my recycle bin. I need to remember to get that out because that would be horrible if I accidentally threw it away, wouldn't it? Oh my goodness. So we have our embossed piece. We have our plastic, we have our blending brush, and then we have our pearlized paints. Now, I don't know if you're even supposed to try to shake this. Let me see. Um, it doesn't say to shake it. I, I have not been shaking it, but uh, you know what? I think it's almost even too thick to shake. I'm just trying to do that off camera, but I don't even think you need to shake it. On my plastic then, for what we need for this, you're going to need about that much paint. It's it's almost more than you would think. I didn't realize that you would need quite so much. And I'm going to dip my brush first, sort of saturating the brush head. And then I'm just going to kind of swirl to get it onto the brush. And then very lightly, and remember, if you've watched any of my blending brush tutorials, I recommend holding the brush lightly back here, not pushing down right here like you're trying to scrub, you know, the sink or the floor or whatever. So very lightly, I'm holding it towards the back, and I'm just letting it barely rest on the raised embossed area. Just barely. It's just barely even touching. And you can always add more, but if you were to get too much, I don't think you're ever going to get this off. I think you'd need to start over. And it's really, 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 really beautiful in person. I know on camera it looks like I'm just smearing white paint, but you need to trust me that in person this just gives the softest, most beautiful shimmer. It's not a glaring white effect.
kind of, I know this looks kind of funny on camera, but really in person, it is just beautiful. So that's just all I did with that. And then I know I haven't even looked at comments, but I bet you somebody is asking, does that ruin your brush? So, you know, I was a little afraid and I thought, well, it's probably going to ruin the brush. But fabulous news. Uh, even after this sat for a while, I took it to the sink. I just put some uh, hand soap in my hand and I just swirled around with some water and it just came completely clean, no residue, no hardness. It was perfect. So uh, it does not ruin your brush is the answer in case anyone is asking. <laughs> Uh, the bundle is eligible for a celebration item with a $50 purchase. The bundle? Susan, what bundle? Sorry, I'm just catching up with comments here. Thank you, Peggy. She says, I love your examples. You do beautiful work. You are super kind. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Tammy. She says, looks amazing on camera. Well, I can, I'm watching over here on the side and it really kind of looks very, very white, but honestly, it's not. It's a really beautiful, soft effect in person. Then the last thing I did for this card in particular, you can see the little white dots I have. I just, okay, make sure that your paint is like down at the tip. Okay. And then I just, on top of each of the little dots that are in the embossing folder, I just put a little bit of this paint. And I liked that it kind of looks like bubbles, air bubbles kind of going up. And I just used their dots as a guideline. I didn't want to try to guess where the dots might go. Now that is going to take a while to dry. I'm going to set this aside and I'll show you when it's dry. Then those dots are a little bit raised and very, very pretty and shimmery. So that is the background for this card. So let's assemble this while I go over some tips for this, um, this suite. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. Thank you. So glad you like it. All righty. I used, let me just make sure, pretty sure. Yeah, Petal Pink. It's Petal Pink. And I love that it gives such a nice, warm, soft glow. And it is a beautiful complementary color with the blue. And I chose it because of some of the coloring that's already in the designer paper. So that's what I chose for my background. And then let's talk about some of these layers. This circle is die cut from this piece of designer paper in the By the Bay package. And I've just used a circle die. You could use any shape any die that you have this is from the stitched um oh i just lost my train of thought. uh stylish shapes sorry yeah stylish shapes circles so that's our circle and i die cut this i think it's a muscle from this sheet you can also die cut So there's the muscle. You can also die cut the crabs. So if you wanted, a, I would call that crumb cake probably. If you wanted a crumb cake colored one, you could die cut that. And I wanted to show you that, let me find it. This die cuts some of the shells, not all. Here it is. It's right there. So you can cut three shells at once. If you want to cut those tiny shells out of here, you can use that die. These also correspond with stamps as well. And so that's the muscle. And then the birdie also die cuts right out of this paper. So there's the bird. I love this birdie. I think he's really sweet. And I know I've heard a lot of people say that they don't care for the birds in this bundle, but man, I love them. I really, really think that they're 
pretty and cute. I, I just love them. And also out of this sheet, I die cut the crab that is, I think this goes really well with the uh, petal pink cardstock, which is kind of why I chose that for the background. So we have those. And then this I've just stamped from the uh, Amazing Year stamp set on a die cut from, I think this is from All That. It's my favorite set of dies. So that I have ready to go. And those are the pieces that we're going to put together. And then I have other tips to show you with the other cards. So when I am adhering anything that is embossed, especially the 3D folders, I like to use liquid glue and I like to use more glue than I normally would because that glue is going to kind of come up and seep into these raised areas. And if you just use a tiny bit of glue, you're really not going to get as nice of uh, adhesion, adherence. I don't know. What's the word? Whatever you call it. You know what I mean, right? So I like to use liquid glue. And then I'm going to, just because it's out, I'll use it for this circle. Add the circle with the liquid glue. Isn't this so pretty? Doesn't that just look like you're either looking through a porthole or just looking out at the ocean and maybe an island in the sky. I love that piece. I think it's just so beautiful. I love that. And then we have, I don't know, we can use our adhesive pieces. Um, I think I'll just use a piece of foam adhesive. Let me find a smaller one. Oh, this reminds me. The reason I have this little bucket of these is because of the Valentine event that I did at my husband and son's office. So don't let me forget to tell you all about that at the end today because we had just the best time and I want to fill you in on how that went. If you joined me live last week, you know you heard all about it and you saw the cards that we were going to make and it turned out just so fun. We had just just the best time. It was really great. Um, oh, Donna likes the birds. Kathy likes the birds. Oh, awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad you do. I want to give you a tip. I didn't do it on this card, but I want to show you something. So have you ever seen people use the baker's twine or the linen thread? Hang on. Let me do this the right way. And they wrap it around their hand several times like this. Okay, and then they cut it and they put it on their card, like, say, behind behind something like this. Right. OK, every time I do that, I just think it looks like the worst mess ever. I just don't have the knack for that random thing. I think it looks awesome. I love it when people do it. I can't make it look good. And I came up with something. And I did it actually on a different card. It's not on these, but I want to show you what I did. So I took the Stampin' Up! Linen thread and I doubled it. So you see there's two. Okay, I doubled it. It's about 12-ish inches. Probably don't need quite that much, but to me there's nothing worse than not having enough. I would rather cut off a couple inches and then struggle with a tiny, tiny bit of ribbon or twine or linen thread. Okay, so I'm going to make a bow. But by doubling it, it has two loops on each side, right? And it has two tails on each side. And then I'm going to cut so that I have this. Now, if I put this down and then I continue to do my layers, You know, how, however, however, the, however they're going to be. It doesn't matter, right? Okay, like this. So now I kind of get that random look of the thread. But to me, it wasn't a struggle. Let me hold it up. I don't know if you can see it. It wasn't such a struggle. It didn't stress me out because that other way, it gives me stress. And we shouldn't have stress, right? We shouldn't have stress as we are stamping. <laughs> so... What do you think? I think this looks really nice, at least to my eye. I like that better than struggling with those loops. But 
anyway, I, you know, if it here, neither here nor there, if you like it, do it. If you don't like it, don't worry about it. <laughs> so I'm just going to put some adhesive and stick that down. And then I'm going to layer these pieces right on top of it. And I don't know, I just think it looks pretty cool. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. Do you like this idea? Is it silly? Am I silly for having stress about the loop, the loop thing? <laughs> but don't you agree? We shouldn't have stress, right? This, this shouldn't be stressful. We should just enjoy the whole process and, and just, it should be fun. I think I'll use this one. Oh, I have some hearts. Okay, I think you agree, right? <laughs> okay, so there we go. That's that's all I'm going to do for that. And I, I like that little bit of added, maybe snip off a little bit, but I just like this little added bit of linen thread and the kind of the randomness, but I didn't have the stress. <laughs> Is it silly? <laughs> Our last step is to add some of the beautiful flat pearls, and we can just put those anywhere we'd like. I think they are just so beautiful. And what's really cool is when you use this pearlized enamel effects paint and you add that shimmer, it just totally ties all that in with these beautiful, I kind of like just those three. But it really ties in with these beautiful pearls with this enamel. Yeah, I just like those three. Sorry, I can't even like finish a sentence today. I'm just, I get so excited. So there we go. That's the just the simplicity of that card. And in person, it's so shimmery pretty. I just, I love it. I just think it's really fun. So with and without that little bit of linen thread, I think it makes a nice difference. I really like it. Yes, Holly, it should be fun and relaxing. Exactly. Ex Laura, I, right, Kathy, she says she's seen demonstrators do the loops with the ribbon and she can't do it. I can't do it either. I just, I can't. I I mean, I can do it, but I just don't like the way mine turn out. I, I don't know. I, I'm whatever. <laughs> so there's that card. And then what I wanted to show you as a really pretty alternative... Stampin' Up! also has this die. It's called the Seaside Shells. And I should have shown you this. Oh, here, I'll show you this. Even though this one's not dry, I'm just going to loosely hold it above here because that paint isn't quite dry. But if you use this, you can die cut out those shells. And you can add them then to a project. So on this card, I added them to this card with six different squares of the By the Bay designer paper, layered onto white, layered onto gold, and then layered onto a card base that has another piece of the beautiful By the Bay paper. And the same, it's actually the exact same as this. I added the crab and the mussel to it and then some of those beautiful pearls. And the dimensions, if you want the dimensions for all of these layers, I do have that on my blog uh, tomorrow. So this card and this card, these two, will be on my blog tomorrow. That's February 18th, pattystamps.com. And they're basically one and a half inch squares, but then I've given you the dimensions for those layers so that you get those perfectly spaced frames around them. So that's that idea with the pearlized enamel effects. Oh, Stamping by the Lake says, the trick with the loops is to make a figure eight and attach it in the middle. And, and I've done that as well. I've tried. So here's what she's saying. So you make, you make the loops, okay? And then you twist it so that you get a figure eight, okay? And then you attach it in the middle and you put your, you know, your die cut or your shell or your whatever on top. And I've tried that as well. And to me, I don't know, it just gives me stress. I just feel like it is too 
out of control. <laughs> and if you're wondering, like, when did Stampin' Up! start putting linen thread on spools? They did not. This is, I've shared this before, but I know there's several new people here. This is a spool from my great aunts and my great grandmother and my grandmother. I have a whole bunch of spools that they used to use in sewing and quilting. And I just love them. And I thought it's so silly just to have them in the china cabinet in a, I think I had them in a, like an apothecary jar. I thought that's silly. Why should they be there? And nobody ever sees them. So I rewind the Stampin' Up! linen thread onto them. And so I use them here at my desk. And I just love every time I pick it up and I think about them and all the sewing they did and, you know, how decades, centuries even ago that there were so many more um, people that sewed and did needlework and did their own quilting and clothing and all of that. And it just, it brings me back to all that. It gives me, gives me joy. So there we go. That's what this is, but I love it. It just sits on my desk and I, that's what I use. So I would encourage you, if there's something like that that makes you happy, keep it in your room, in your craft room. Keep it near you. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> All right. So now let's look at the other cards and the other tips. So similar to this card, here is one that has the same squares, the same layering. And I would used a white stitched die cut. I used the, the stamp that has little dots. I just, I, to me, it's just kind of sand. And I stamped that in the background, a die cut birdie. And I thought this was beautiful and serene. So I thought the sympathy was a really nice greeting to use on that. And I, you know, not that you want to have to send sympathy cards, but when you do, I just thought this was probably a a really appropriate and beautiful card to use. I love this design where you use the six squares and you get to see little bits of this beautiful paper. I mean, it's just so awesome. I don't know if you've seen it. I'm just grabbing my sampler here. This paper is just so amazing. The patterns in here especially for anyone who loves the ocean, the beach, shells, all that. Um, it's uh, totally, totally beautiful. So there's another idea for you. And this one uses that same circle idea that we did on the first card. And I put a tag on top of there just for something a little bit different and added those die cut and fussy cut because there's not a die for every one of those. So some of these were just fussy cut. I want to show you something. Can you see this shell and this shell? Oh, uh, might be. Yeah, uh, you can see them. Okay, I want to show you what I did. I discovered that if you used those dies, remember in the beginning I said don't forget about the, these dies because I'm going to show you something fun. If you use this pattern of paper that is in this pack, so this blue one has smaller little kind of fan-shaped glossy accents and this tan one has larger if you use those dies look at the shells that you get isn't that cool so my friend tammy and i are actually teaching a class a uh, week from saturday week from tomorrow and so i die cut a whole bunch of those for our class for our students to use on their cards Aren't they beautiful? I just thought that was just such a fun discovery. So that's why it says, these are already die cut for you. That's for our class. They're not already die cut for you from Stampin' Up. So like ignore that if you're, you're thinking, wait, what? It comes like that? No, I did that. But I thought that was a super fun tip. And so that is what I added to the additional die cut shells. I thought that was really pretty. And then I layered two different patterns there. So there's actually like maybe five different patterns on this card. And I love that when all the patterns just kind of mix and match. I think that it's just so pretty. Oh, Jennifer says, what the what? Love that idea for the shells. I'm glad you like that. Tammy, I'm glad you like it too. Holly. Oh, thank you, Louise. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Evelyn. I'm glad you like that. Okay, we have two tips to go over on this sweet little note card. This is 
from the craft note card package. And I don't know if you noticed, but this year in, well, almost a year ago now, when the annual catalog debuted, they included a box in the package of these craft note cards. So if you wanted to make up a set of cards and give it in a beautiful matching box, there's a craft colored box that comes in this now. So just note that if you had not seen that yet. So anyway, this is note card size. You can see the difference of a regular four and a quarter by five and a half. So these are three and a half by five, a little smaller. And I want to talk to you about two things on this card. I want to show you what I did with the, we'll call it sand. I know it's not really, you know, but it looks like sand. And then I want to show you what I did on the grass. So in the die set, like we went over in the beginning, remember that a lot of the dies will cut out an actual image. Remember, here's those shells I just showed you. There's also this piece, and the sample is down here at the bottom. What this does is that when you place it on your paper, all it cuts is the top kind of squiggle. It does not cut the straight part. So wherever you put that on your paper, it's going to cut the squiggle and everything else down here will remain. So you can see here on this one that I die cut right there. So there's that piece. But what I did was I grabbed a blending brush. And wait, I need soft suede. That's not going to be dark enough. Oh no, crumb cake. I think that's what I used. Let me grab the crumb cake pad. And if you want it darker, just use soft suede. So I grabbed my blending brush and crumb cake. And I just blended ink right on top. And I like to build up several softer lighter layers rather than going in with a super dark layer at first because you can't get the ink off. You can always build up beautiful layers of color. So can, yeah, you can see the difference there, right? So you can see how it's darkening. So I just added some interest with that and then make sure Make sure you grab a tissue or a um, paper towel or if you have like a microfiber cloth that you use and wipe off. See, you're going to get that ink because it's kind of like emboss resist. These shiny areas are resisting that ink. It's not going to soak in on the shiny areas. So before you handle it and cut it and add it to your project, you definitely want to wipe off the extra ink. But that is how I did this layer of sand down at the bottom. And I thought that just turned out super, super pretty. The other tip I want to give you for making this kind of grassy, whatever this is, it doesn't really matter what colors you pick. So just think about the color that you want. Grab that cardstock and either grab your stamp and blend in a matching color or in sort of a coordinating color. And it doesn't matter. So this is mint macaron. No. Yeah, this is mint macaron cardstock. You could use either soft succulent or mint macaron. And you want kind of a just a really random squiggle. And you could do any color that just goes together. Then you take your dies and you put them on top and you die cut. And so do you, can you see how it has just sort of those variegated squiggly extra bits of color? It just makes it so that it doesn't look like just a plain piece of die cut cardstock. And it, It'll blend in and soften, so that's why you don't see like super pronounced stripes, but it's just enough to give it a little bit of extra something something.
if you know what I mean. It's just, I think, a really fun tip. And I use that technique a lot with several different, like you could do it with flowers, any leaves, you could do it with butterflies, anything, whatever you are working on, you can do that. Yes, very simple and effective. Exactly, exactly. Now you could do it with regular markers, but they don't like, um, I don't know, blend in. They don't soften. Do you see how this is already sort of just blended in and softened? Because these are alcohol markers, they're meant to blend. If you do it with a regular water-based marker, it's going to stay really pronounced and it will look more like stripes uh, rather than just, you know, just interest, right? I think you get what I'm saying. <laughs> So let's look at them all again. And just another reminder, it's on low inventory as of today. This live is February 17th. If you're watching it today, this is on low inventory. So if you're thinking about getting it, that is the number for the dies. That's the number for the bundle. And if you do not work with a demonstrator, I'd be happy to help you. You can go to pattystamps.com to shop. And all of these supplies are already on my blog today. I think I've got them all there. I missed something and then I relinked it, I think, in tomorrow's blog. But awesome. Randy says she learned a lot today. Oh, and don't go if you want to hear about the the um, stamping with the guys. I'm, gonna, I'm still going to share that. I've got this ready to share. But I'm just going to look back here and see if there are any questions. Oh, good. So many tips. I'm glad you loved all the tips, everybody. Thank you so much, everyone. Just checking back here. Oh, live from Saskatchewan, Canada. Welcome. <laughs> Peggy says, love your attention for detail. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. Randy said, I learned a lot today. Thanks for sharing. You are also welcome. Thank you. Oh, good. Colleen says she ordered this suite two days ago, and she's glad she did. Awesome. I love it. Oh, and from Calgary, Alberta. Hello, Evelyn. Thank you, everyone. So glad you enjoyed them. I am super glad that you enjoyed them. So any questions on the cards before we move on to the Valentine stamping with the office? Good. Jane said she learned a lot. Thank you, everyone. I am so glad. I love to give you sort of the overview, my thoughts, my tips, card making tips, just all the tips in general. I think it's really helpful, especially if you get in the habit of doing this with your new products so that you just get a feel for what everything does. Because I don't know about you, but I feel like sometimes a product retires and I've only used maybe a third of the stamps and I haven't even really explored what everything does. And so this way I get it in my mind and I see, okay, that that could have the pearl in it and this doesn't have a stamp and this has embossing and I just sort of get my brain wrapped around the whole thing. And to me, it's just a really helpful way to start out crafting and creating. Oh, thanks, Gail. Yes, I use note cards all the time. I love the white and the craft note cards. Thank you, everyone. So glad that you're here and enjoying it. So let me just catch you up on the Valentine stamping that I did at the office. I went on Monday, February 13th, to the office where my husband and son work. They both work together. There's an office of um, about roughly 20-ish engineers and uh, people that work in their structural engineering field with different tasks. And I brought all the supplies and they made valentines for their sweethearts. And you can see by these smiling faces... They had an amazing time. This isn't everybody, but this was almost everybody that crafted with me. These are actually the owners of the company. And look, I think they even might look the happiest of everybody. They were really 
thrilled with their Valentines. I also had a big basket of goodies that I took that they could take home, things with candies and treats inside, 3D, you know, bags and boxes and whatnot. And they just had the best time. It was so fun. I did them in groups of three. So it was a huge, huge um, conference table. I love it. I wish I had that in my space. And so it was just easy for me to have groups of three of them at a time and walked them through. And they had so much attention to detail of what every pattern looked like with a different pattern, what colors went together. Uh, lots of them loved all the, the glimmery, shimmery papers. Let me grab, I'll show you these two. These were like their favorites. In fact, I ran out of the gold shimmer paper. This was their favorite. They loved the gold shimmer paper and the freesia shimmer paper. Those were their two favorites, which surprised me a tiny bit, but they're beautiful. I don't know what I expected exactly. They also really loved the textured shimmer paper. These are both in the January to April mini catalog. They loved those. I will say that they're... Their use of the liquid glue was fun to watch because most of them used about five to six times as much glue as you need. And I kept showing them like you can just put it around the perimeter or maybe a squiggle in the middle. And they're like, you know, just it, I mean, it was fine. It was fine, but some of the cards were pretty wet. So that was kind of funny. And they really loved the punches. I took the heart punches, the two that layer. Let me grab them out of my drawer here. So these two punches that layer together, I took those and they got to punch out any patterns they wanted to with those to add to their cards. And they loved those. They thought that those punches were just like wow, the most amazing thing. And uh, I think it was Mitch who said, wow, you have just the coolest stuff. I'm like, oh, you should see my craft room. This is nothing, buddy. <laughs> but I, I just really was thrilled that they were such good sports and they had such a fun time. And I think I'll do it again for Mother's Day. But I will go maybe a week to 10 days early so that they have time to mail them because I realized that some people had probably wanted to mail a card and doing it the day before Valentine's didn't give them that chance. So that was a good learning opportunity for me, but it was just really, really fun to watch them craft and create and just be so into it. And um, yeah, it was, it was just so fun. It was such a fun day. Yes, people love glue. Yes, and they were very detail-oriented. They are structural engineers. They're very detail-oriented. So, yeah, it shouldn't have surprised me. But I don't know. I just kind of thought being the first time that most of them crafted, it wouldn't have surprised me if they were just like, oh, I don't care. Just give me whatever and, and punch, punch and glue it together. But no, no, no. They went through every scrap, looked at every color, looked at the combinations, what went together. And they just did an amazing job on their cards. It was so fun to watch. So that's catching you up on that. And it was really, really a fun day. I'm so glad that I did it. So thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I'm so happy that you were watching today. Oh, and next Friday, the 24th, I have I think the most amazing cards to share with you. I've already pre-recorded a video for me for you because I won't be here in person next Friday. I will be doing something else, which I'll catch you up on later. But I pre-recorded a video with the cards that I made for two very special milestone birthdays that are coming up in the coming week. And so I thought, well, I'm give, giving these cards away. I need to hurry up and do a video. So I did that yesterday and you're going to get to see that next week. And I hope that you love it. I just think they are amazing if I do say so myself. And so that will be on Friday, the 24th. Watch for the pre-recorded video, not the live. Oh, Linda, that's cute. She says, any recruits? I did tell several of the engineers that they really should contemplate signing up as a demonstrator in their spare time. And of course, they all laughed at me. But, you know, <laughs> I didn't expect any seriousness out of that. <laughs> yeah, Genevieve, it was so much fun. It really was fun. 
Oh, you're welcome, Christine. She says, thanks, Patty, for a great start to my weekend. That's so kind of you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So glad you had fun. All righty. Well, that's what I had for you today. I appreciate you hanging out and commenting and liking and thumbs upping and all those good things. And I hope that you will visit pattystamps.com tomorrow and Sunday if you want the still photos of these cards so that you can pin them to your Pinterest boards or print them or save them or, you know, whatever it is you like to do to remember projects. Oh, thank you. I see the hearts and the thumbs up. You are all so sweet. Thanks, Gail. She says, I enjoy your videos. That is so sweet. You're welcome, Susan. Glad you enjoyed the inspiration. Thanks, Mary. Oh, it's so nice to see you all here. Thank you again. Thanks, Holly. I will um, look forward to being back in person with you in early March. Let's see, that would be the third. March 3rd, we'll have another live. And hopefully, we'll continue with our technique class series. That's my goal, is to get another one of those ready for you. And hope you all have... <laughs> Peggy says, I'm ordering as you talk. That's awesome. <laughs> I hope you all have a fabulous weekend. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.